Hello, my name is Dan Tolliver. I am the CTO and co-founder of Hypercycle. We build decentralized AI. When we started two years ago, the world was a very different place. Chat GPT had just come out, and the common belief was that the largest models running on the largest hardware with access to the most data would win, that this was a winner-take-all event of AI, particularly generative AI, coming out to the world. We have over a decade of experience in decentralized AI and started HyperCycle two years ago with a very different thesis, which was that these largest models on the largest hardware with the largest data would have some areas in which they excelled. But the use case space for AI is vast, and it has become clear over the last two years that, in fact, smaller models that are specialized for particular use cases can win. In fact, today, many people who are interested in this run their own models on their own hardware, on their laptops, on commodity hardware, that are trained and fine-tuned for their particular use cases. And doing this provides not only greater efficiency, cost efficiency, privacy efficiency, but also provides better results for those underrepresented use cases. And this is true not only in North America, but in many other places around the globe where the large models that are run by large companies underrepresent those languages in their data models, underrepresent those specific use cases and the data sets. So as a result, we have a world that is very multipolar in the AI domain, which is one of our central theses that we started with, that these small models would cover more use case space, ultimately, than the large models, and that, as a result, centralized AI would win not everything, but some smaller portion of that use case space, and a large amount of it would remain for people who were using models on their own laptops, or on their own servers, on-prem, in their company. So, that's the world that we're living in today, increasingly, we have a separate thesis as well, one that hasn't been proven out yet. These models right now are working in isolation. When I perform a task on my computer, the model that I'm running on my computer runs locally, and it's entirely isolated from everything else that's on my computer. I give it an input, it gives me an output, and that is the end of that story. But increasingly, we are seeing multimodal models, we are seeing mixes of models, we are seeing mixtures of experts. This is a trend that the future is moving toward. There's a parallel in the enterprise space, if we think about large corporations, When you access a service in an enterprise, the typical enterprise has hundreds of third-party services that it's actually reaching out to behind the scenes. But you're not aware of any of those. You're not exposed to that. The only interaction that you have with them is through their API that they give you. And that means that there is no pressure on those underlying services to provide you with a better cost. There is no way to route around errors that are created there. There is no way for you to get access to them directly and fine tune that network of services to perform the task that you would like it to perform with higher accuracy. This is partly because that corporate space wants it to be this way. But the reason that you can't do this directly yourself also has to do with economics. There is not a good way for you to pay those services a small amount in a low latency way without a long-term relationship with them. This is one of the places that decentralized AI comes into play.
HyperCycle brings a technique for making these kinds of payments. And what that allows us to do under the hood is to create a multi-sided ecosystem where we bring in people who are operating HyperCycle nodes. We bring in connections between those nodes through this low friction payment And we connect the residue between those who are running the hardware, those who are creating the AI models, and those who are running the software itself and providing those services. And by doing this, we allow those AI nodes to be able to communicate with each other in the same way that you can communicate with them. That means that one hypercycle node is able to talk directly to other hypercycle nodes and ask it to do services that it can't itself perform. By doing this, we are able to create ad hoc networks of hypercycle nodes that can perform tasks on demand and reorient themselves on demand to respond efficiently to the demands in the marketplace, including those that are underrepresented by larger corporations. To do this, we have to create a large ecosystem and seed that ecosystem with a variety of companies. One of those companies is called Ring of Rings, and that company is sponsoring a hackathon over the course of this event. If you're interested in that, please come and talk to me or to Tufi, who gave a keynote earlier today on the main stage. You're also welcome to talk to any of our other representatives. There are a variety of very nice prizes for this hackathon, including access to the Ring of Ring hardware itself and prizes that are equivalent to $10,000 for the winners of the hackathon. I want to finish by talking about the particular aspect of this specialization, which goes beyond a one-size-fits-all approach. So the main factors that are in place here are the low friction asset, where we containerize assets and bring them into our payment rails and then allow hypercycle node operators to choose the assets that they are receiving as payment for their services, as well as sending to other hypercycle nodes. We also allow external services to be proxied into from the hypercycle network and payments to be covered over to them. This gives us the ability to have node operators that are providing very low friction interfaces between external third party services and internal decentralized services. It also gives us the ability to have hypercycle node operators who are running models that specifically understand how to take a request and distribute it out to other node operators on the marketplace so that they are able to get the best pricing and availability, latency, whichever characteristics they are most interested in, in a spot pricing best of breed way at that immediate moment. This is, of course, recursive. And the flexibility is such that we can also create ad hoc networks that can perform transactions in other ways. For instance, they can perform transactions making use of a fair exchange protocol that guarantees that the result will be delivered if payment is delivered. And if the result is not delivered, then payment is not delivered. 
This is another way of decreasing the friction and increasing the efficiency of these services that are being provided. So I'd like to wish you good luck on the hackathon. And I would like to invite you to come and talk to us if anything about this sounded interesting. Thank you. Have a good day.